Um, hey, so uh, today Wesley Barty got his uh, ruling, I guess you will, from Australian version of the FAA. And uh, it was a pretty um, decent fine. It could have been much, much worse. It was $2,750, which uh, um, I was pleased to see myself. Uh, still a little bit of chunk and change. But uh, Wesley posted up a GoFundMe uh, as well as a copy of the the letter uh, proving that they did do 100 kilometers. Um, and the GoFundMe was fully uh, funded in three hours. And so shout out to everybody that uh, donated to, to help um, show some love. And part of the uh, uh, punishment, I guess, if you will, is, is of course all the videos of uh, the long range testing and stuff had to be pulled down. And I, I hated to see that one video um, with all their hard work and, and effort um, have to get pulled down. So I reached out to uh, Wesley and congratulated him and um, asked him if, if I could find a copy of it, if he would be uh, okay with me uh, sharing it with the community. Because I personally think it's a pretty cool video and I think it's, it's part of uh, uh, FPV history. And uh, he said, yeah, he actually sh uh, provided me with a uh, archived link of it. So I'm going to put that down in the description for you if you want to take a look at the, the archived version. But uh, right after this, um, the video is going to play the full video of, of the original uh, version, what have you. But uh, with that said, I'm going to get off here. But y'all hop on over to the Express LRS uh, group page and congratulate them and show that show them devs and everybody uh, a lot of love because uh, they put a lot of effort in that video and uh, we benefited from it and they put a lot of effort in the link and we benefited from it so so go show those guys some loves i'm gonna shut up now here's the video hey guys what's going on express LRS has seen a significant increase in popularity over the past year which is no surprise given the huge amount of groundbreaking features that have been developed in such a short time frame things like deja vu diversity aid or dvda for short as well as the 1000 hertz packet rate are just a few of the things that well and truly justify the express part of the name and it makes perfect sense as to why the open source rc link has become so popular with the quad crowd but what about the lrs part can we really call it a long range system if the maximum range record for the 2.4 gig frequency is only 45 kilometers? Now, of course, there's no hard and fast definition of what constitutes as long range, and a 45 kilometer range record is still a damn long way out and definitely nothing to be scoffed at. But if you're talking about true, big, bald, ass clenching, rite of passage type long range, then the only way to truly prove that an RC link is capable of the title is when you hit the elusive 100 kilometer milestone. This one's been a long time coming for me, but in tonight's episode, we're finally gonna be pushing Express LRS to the raw limits. For over a year now, I've had a vision of building a proper long range platform that can really demonstrate the range capabilities of Express LRS. And some of the long time subscribers to the channel may remember my attempts at this with the MFE Believer. The Believer is an outstanding plane with big potential to hit some really impressive flight times and distances. So when I built one up 12 months ago, I had high hopes that this would be the plane to take me out to my goal of 100 kilometers. Unfortunately, things didn't really go to plan. And on my second tuning flight, the plane entered into an unrecoverable death spiral. And well, the ground's kind of hard when you hit it head first at 200 kilometers an hour. Rather than let that failure deter me though, I went back to the drawing board and decided I'd try my luck with something a little bit smaller. There was a bunch of recommendations in the comments on my Believer Carnage video to just grab myself a mini talon and call it a day. But there was also a decent number of people that were seeing good results with the newer Talon Pro. With a wingspan of 1.35 meters and a nice big battery compartment, the Talon Pro looked like it was exactly what I needed. So I ordered one in and kicked off the journey on my second attempt at hitting the elusive 100 kilometers. Now, obviously component selection is pretty important when you're building a plane for a flight like this. And one of the most important things to figure out is your battery capacity. You go too big with the battery and you will overload the airframe. And if you go too small, you risk hitting an unexpected headwind on the way home and running out. Not that I ever do that. <clears throat> to get out to 100 kilometers, we need a battery that can safely cover a 200 kilometer round trip, plus a nice buffer on top. The Talon Pro definitely has a decent sized battery bay, but even so, the size and weight of a battery like this was pushing things a little bit for the airframe and made me slightly uncomfortable, especially given my previous failure. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely achievable on this plane and others have done it before, but the weight is starting to get pretty chunky. So while I was discussing this concern with some of the Express LRS devs, one of the guys raised a very good point. 
If my objective is to demonstrate that Express LRS is capable of 100 kilometers, then why not just do a one-way trip? The primary goal here is to demonstrate that the link can do the distance, so the return trip is just a boring old waste of time and battery. And so, our cunning plan on how to cheat at doing long range began to form. I'd chuck the plane into the car, drive it up to the launch site, and set up the ground station and a transmitter with my binding phrase flash to it. Meanwhile, Jai and Alessandro, who are the other two local Express LRS devs, would drive out to the landing site 100 kilometers away and set up their goggles and a second transmitter, which was also flashed with the same binding phrase as my transmitter. I'd launch the plane, hopefully fly it out to 100 kilometers, power off my handset, Jai powers up his and takes control to safely land the plane all in one piece. Much easier than flying at home, right? It also meant that I could get away with using a much smaller battery for the plane, so after bench testing some reclaimed Tesla Model X cells, I settled on building a 6S3P 21700 pack with a total capacity of 15,000 milliamp hours. The video link was obviously going to be another concern, especially considering I was planning to use 2.4 gig for the control link. This kind of excludes using 1.3 gig for the video due to the frequency crossover with the aliasing, and this is a little bit annoying because 1.3 gig would have been the preferred option for a flight like this. Instead, I decided I'd try my luck with 5.8 gig video, and Foxeer has conveniently sent me out their Reaper Extreme 2.5 watt VTX for testing, which seems to mostly live up to the marketed power output in my bench results, so it seems like a good candidate for the job. I've got the VTX mounted up outside the fuselage here to give the best cooling possible, and I've got that paired with a 5.8 gig TrueRC Singularity antenna. On the ground side, I've taken my trademark phrase dinner plate to a whole new level with a 650mm parabolic dish antenna and a TrueRC sniper acting as the 5.8 gig feeder. According to the specs online, the dish should have a gain of about 30 dB, which should hopefully give us a chance of getting that 5.8 gig video back from 100 kilometers out. The final and most important choice was which hardware to select for the Express LRS link. I needed something quality that was going to be reliable at high power outputs, and with the release of the 2 watt capable Ranger module from Radio Master, it was a no-brainer choice. For the second TX module in Jai's handset, we won't have a need for all-out power since the plane will be circling directly overhead, so we went with the Radio Master Micro module. For the RX in the plane, I chose the Matek R24D diversity receiver for the 100 milliwatts of telemetry power, and I've coupled that with a Beta FPV dipole and a TrueRC 2.4 gig BUD pole. The rest of the build components are pretty standard stuff, but I'll put a full hardware list down into the video description if you want any more specific details. With the plane fully built and the flight plan set, we're good to go. So we picked out a date when the wind and the weather looked good and started ourselves a countdown timer with anxious excitement. Okay, today's a big day, boys and girls. It's still dark outside at the moment. It's about 3.30 a.m. here, so we're about an hour and a half away from our scheduled 5 a.m. launch. And I'm just about to leave home on the way up the hill to the launch location. We're planning on live streaming the 100 kilometer attempt to the rest of the Express LRS dev group so that we can bring the rest of the boys along for the ride for this hopefully momentous occasion. Uh, but even if we fail spectacularly, it should be a bit of fun. Fingers crossed it all works out. All right, are we live? Yes. Nice, good one. Still a ton of setup to do, so grab a coffee or a beer or something like that. We've still got 20 minutes to go. Hopefully we can launch on time. I still gotta put the plane together and a few other bits and pieces. Yeah, fingers crossed. After a short delay chatting with some intrigued onlookers, the plane was all together and powered up and everything was prepped and ready to go. With Jai, Sandro and the rest of the dev team watching via the live stream, I lined up for one of the most nerve-wracking throws I've done in a long, long time. After a slightly nail-biting launch, the plane was up in the air and flying beautifully. We did a quick check of the link stats just to confirm that everything was looking good, 
and I've broken out these stats to the right hand side of the screen here just so that it's easy to keep an eye on how the link is performing as the distance increases without needing to go and hunt for them on my busy OSD. If the link stats drop too low, obviously the plane will enter fail safe and attempt to return home. However, this behavior isn't exactly what we want for this particular flight. As I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be a one-way trip, so we only have enough battery on board to fly 100 kilometers. And if we get out to around the 80 kilometer mark and fail safe, the plane isn't gonna have enough battery left to turn around and fly 80 Ks back home again. So we need to get a little bit creative with some of the settings in ArduPilot. We've got a waypoint mission set up in Mission Planner, and this is to ensure that even if we lose video somewhere along the way, the plane will definitely still end up circling above the landing zone at the end of the flight, ready for Giant Sandro to take control. We've also got a rally point configured at the landing zone and this basically acts as a second return to home point in the event of failsafe. This means that once we pass the halfway point at 50 kilometers, the plane will head to the landing zone if we drop the link rather than turning around and coming back home. So 50 kilometers is essentially our point of no return. Obviously we're hoping to get to 100 k's without hitting failsafe at all. So we wanna keep an eye on LQ as distance increases and cross our fingers that video holds out as long as possible. Let's keep pushing on. While Jai and Sandra were taking their sweet ass time at McDonald's buying coffee and hash browns, the plane was making great time heading towards the landing zone. In fact, it was making such great time that we weren't sure if it might actually beat the boys there. We've just passed the 50 kilometer mark, so we're past the point of no return, and LQ's been pinned at 100 for pretty much the whole time now, with dynamic power on the range of TX modules sitting at around 500 milliwatts at this stage in the flight. We've had a couple rough patches with the video feed, but each time it started to get bad, a simple readjustment to the satellite dish direction was all that was needed to bring it back into almost crystal clear again, which is pretty impressive given they're about 50 k's out right now. This is really promising to see, because if we lose video, we'll need to rely on telemetry to complete the rest of the flight, and I'm a little bit anxious about whether or not the 100 milliwatts of telemetry power on the Maytek RX is going to hold on for the full 100 kilometers. So far though, both video and telemetry are looking amazing, and the only thing that was dropping sporadically was my Twitch stream to the rest of the dev group. Let's keep going. Three kilometers now and things are starting to get a little bit dicey. I was skeptical that the 5.8 gig video would hold up all the way to 100 kilometers and unfortunately it seems like that skepticism has been realized here as we pass the 80k mark. I've done my best to screw around with the position of the dish to find a better signal but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be helping this time. To make matters worse we seem to have hit a hot spot for local RF interference here because the signal to noise ratio has plummeted into negative values which is starting to have an impact on link quality. Cue the suspense music. With the video gone, I decided to switch over to Mission Planner so we could keep an eye on the plane's live location on the map and make sure we were still on course to hit our planned waypoints. ExpressLRS doesn't have native Mavlink support yet, so these GPS updates are coming from an ESP32 inside my TX16S, which is converting CRSF to Mavlink for the GPS messages and streaming it to Mission Planner via Bluetooth. It's a bit janky and I haven't implemented the full set of telemetry messages in the converter, but it's definitely getting the job done here to keep us updated on the mission progress in the absence of a video feed. Or at least it was until things took a turn for the worse and we started to drop telemetry. With both the video and telemetry gone, we now have absolutely no way to track the position of the plane and no idea how the link quality is looking. This is basically the worst case situation at the moment because it means we're flying completely blind. And then all of a sudden, our luck turned around. Jai and Sandro arrive on site at the landing zone and switch on their goggles and immediately get a crystal clear feed from the plane. We all jump into a voice call along with the rest of the devs 
which marks the very first Express LRS dev meeting that we've ever had. And at that moment, it suddenly became one of the best experiences I've ever had whilst flying long range. Everyone was working together as a team to complete the final leg of the flight. We had Giant Sandro relaying stats from the video feed. We had the boys in the dev call helping out with the ground control location data via the live stream. And finally, we had myself doing my best to maintain the Express LRS link and telemetry, which had surprisingly started to come good and LQ was bouncing around 100 once again. And just when I thought things couldn't get any better, we realized that we were about to hit our milestone. You want call outs? We're at 99 99.5, 99.7, 99.8, 99.9, let's go to do it! 100! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Team. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> the excitement didn't end there though, because with the RF interference somewhat behind us, we started to get regular telemetry packets through again, which is pretty mind blowing given the RX only has a 100 milliwatt power output for telemetry. With the Ranger now sitting on 2 watts with dynamic power, we also had LQ bouncing off 100 again, and to top it all off, we also started to get some fuzzy video coming through. Can you see anything at all, Wes, or is it just static for you? I'm just checking, uh, it's gonna just be static for me. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's popping in. It came through for a second. Yeah, no, it's, it's. I can fully see. It's impressive that 5.8 can do that. It was far from being a solid feed, but it was pretty damn impressive to see brief patches of flyable 5.8 gig video coming through from 100 kilometers out. With the video, telemetry and LQ all looking somewhat solid again, and the plane now circling above the landing zone, everything was back on track. But we weren't quite out of the woods yet, because we still had to complete the handover process to transfer control of the plane from my handset to Jai's. Alright, I'm about to switch my handset off. Handset's off. Should be good, Jai. Yep, link's dropped. We have a link. All right. <laughs> the sync code is good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> With both the control and the video now handed over to Jai, who hasn't flown a fixed wing in about five years or so, all that was left to do was brace for landing. We are 10 seconds from landing, boys. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Three. Two, one, woo yeah! We landed! <laughs> Let's go find it! <laughs> now, is it in one piece? It yeah, looks like it's yeah, it's beautiful! No perfect! That's perfect! Yeah. <laughs> looks like it's got some miles on it, though. Thanks, God! <laughs> Jack and land! So cool. That all went amazingly well. I'm super stoked to have finally hit my 100 km goal with Express LRS, but I'm also just blown away at how well everything performed. We had 100 LQ at 100 km out thanks to the outstanding performance from the Ranger TX module, so shout out to Ben and Owen and the rest of the Radio Master team for the excellent work there. You guys should be proud of the amazing results that we've been able to achieve here today. Almost more impressive was seeing regular telemetry updates come through from 100 km with the Maytech R24D receiver, which only has a 100 milliwatt power output. So shout out to Samson and Maytech for that. I was also blown away to see 5.8 gig video partially coming through from 100 k's out. So credit to the crew at Fox Ear for the solid performance on the 2.5 watt Reaper Extreme VTX, as well as Hugo from TrueRC for the top quality antennas. And last but definitely not least, shout out to the Express LRS dev crew. It was so cool to have all the guys in the call for the first time hitting 100 k's with Express LRS and everything in the firmware just worked flawlessly. Captain Bry's dynamic power code was doing exactly what we needed to keep the LQ nice and strong even though we hit that spot of local interference. As you can see here from the edge TX logs, the LQ was pinned at 100 all the way out until the signal to noise ratio dropped off hard here at about 80 kilometers with the power levels mostly sitting around the 250 to 500 milliwatts levels up until that point. Shugabe's stub and sender code also really stood out, which somehow was able to keep the telemetry alive for most of the flight. And as you can see here, we only have one or two spots in the logs where we weren't getting regular data updates. All right, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. I've genuinely had an absolute blast making tonight's episode, so I really hope you guys enjoy it as much as I have in making it. Thanks so much for watching and catch you in the next one. See ya.